Hi, everybody. You're watching the MATLAB Simulink Racing Lounge. And in our nice series about vehicle modeling, we have now episode three. Um, first of all, hello, Ed. Hey, Christoph. How's it going? Um, very good. And today, we have the great pleasure to sit next to each other in Boston, Massachusetts. Um, well, let, let's get started right away. Sounds good. So again, vehicle modeling, part three. So we're going to cover Simscape today. What we saw before in the series was Simulink, which implements a, an equation-based approach. Then we saw the powertrain block set, which is built on Simulink, but then that's a more data-driven approach. Now what we're going to cover today, again, is a physical modeling approach with Simscape. And then in the future, coming soon, we're going to cover Simscape multibody, which is 3D and visualization. Cool. Let's try one thing. Um, you have one phrase to describe Simscape. What would you say? Intuitive. OK, nice. <laughs> <laughs> Not even a phrase, it's just a word. Very good. Yeah. Um, <laughs> just one well, word. We, we say physical modeling, but you will see that it's a very intuitive modeling approach. Um, and I would add uh, one phrase, probably simple, comma, less blocks. I agree. Cool. I like it. Cool. Uh, multibody will be in the, in the next section, so we will model a full vehicle in a 3D environment. Um, that to come. But let's start with, with the Simscape today. All right. So first, we're going to have an overview of Simscape, how it's composed, some yep. of its advantages. And then we're going to improve an existing demo so that people can see how easy it can, it can be to get right. started with vehicle modeling in Simscape. Right. And then we're going to summarize everything in our key points and takeaways. Nice. And for that specific episode, um, it's, it's great because you hadn't a lot of work to do. We are using a uh, shipping demo, so a demo that comes with your, with your installation. And we will be um, pointing you to our Simscape online training, which is free of charge for automotive student teams. Um, where you learn everything from scratch. So we'll start with a blank Simscape canvas and gradually build up a vehicle model that you can use for, well, prediction of energy consumption or lifetime simulation even. That's right. Simscape implements a physical modeling approach. And what that means is that instead of using blocks and signals, now we use components and physical connections. And so to better understand that, let's have a look at this simple motor example. So in Simscape, this model would look like what I have here in the lower right corner. Mm -hmm. We have a voltage and also a resistance, inductance, and a conversion from the electrical domain to the mechanical domain. Right. And then we also have an inertia and a friction associated with that rotational motion. So this looks very much like a hand-drawn schematic of this system if I were to draw this on paper. And I think an advantage of this is that it enables you to model different domains in a single model. We saw that we have things from the electrical domain, shown in blue, but also from the mechanical domain, shown in green. And it's not just constrained to these two domains. You can have many different domains, for example, thermal elements or things from the magnetic domain. And you can even create your own custom domains and blocks as well with Simscape using the SSC language. Cool. At that point, maybe it's, it's, it's interesting to, to look a bit into the differences between Simulink and Simscape. So one thing, uh, a commonality, is you're using the same tool. So you're using the Simulink user interface. Yep. Um, and as you said, um, models um, are comprised, again, of blocks. But they blocks represent physical components. And have a look at that schematic. For example, the electric circuit, it looks a lot like you would um, actually draw it on paper. This is something special. So uh, models usually have a lot less blocks. And they look very similar to how you would draw them. And I think something that one has to bear in mind, Simulink is always one-way signals. They are always going in, in, a, in a distinct direction. For Simscape, it's bidirectional signals. Because um, I think you will come up with an example. Um, you have power being transferred, which is usually the product of a torque and an inertia. Or for electric circuits, it's, it's voltage and current. So it's, it's not only signals flowing in one direction, um, but it's a balance um, that the solver at the end tries to evaluate. Right. And you do bring up a really good point mm -hmm. about Simscape. There are two variables usually associated with these physical connections. You have your through variable and your across variable. Mm -hmm. And so for example, in the mechanical domain, if we're talking about rotational motion, you would have a torque and a rotational speed. And the product of these two yeah. equals the power in that right. domain. Same thing for the electrical. If we take the voltage and the current that is in the physical connections, if we multiply those two, then we get the power output. And so it's important to keep that in mind if you're creating your own custom domain. Exactly, and they depend on each other. Otherwise, it wouldn't work. Absolutely. Yeah. All right. Another important thing to remember about Simscape is that there are units associated with the physical connections and also right. the parameters that are used in these components. And finally, Simscape is also supported for cogeneration if you want to do testing or deployment or on hardware. Yeah, I think this is probably a use case where, where people are 
thinking about a prototype of a certain component, but they are not done uh, manufacturing it. So they could deploy that onto a certain computer, mimicking the actual hardware. Um, and this is when we talk about code generation. This, this can be pretty important for you in case you, you want to try out physical systems without actually having built them. That's right. Excellent. So I think Simscape is a great choice for those users who um, want a block to implement a set of equations. So we saw in, Sims in Simulink, you actually have to develop those equations, model them. So Simscape is perfect to have just one block that models those equations for you. And those components can be as simple as a resistor or an inertia block or a spring or a damper, right. but they can also be as complex as an engine or a clutch or a transmission, things yep. like that. Nice. I think Simscape is also great to reduce the visual complexity of the model. When you start modeling those equations in Simulink, a model can get cluttered very easily. So Simscape definitely helps with that. Finally, you can have a lot of different domains in just one model. For example, if, if we're talking about a car, you can have things that are electrical, mechanical, thermal, and more. So I think that's uh, a very convenient way to do this. Yeah, just, just to give an example on, on what Ed just said, um, we had a Formula student team or Formula SAE team from Virginia Tech presenting in the racing lounge. And they've done a pretty interesting approach where they merged the mechanical and the thermal domain. Right. Because they were trying to design a, a cooling system for, for the FSAE car. Um, so they used a pretty interesting approach. And as you said, all domains can be combined with, with each other. That's right. All right, so now I'm going to dive into how Simscape is broken mm -hmm. down. First, uh, we provide the Simscape Foundation Library, which provides very basic blocks and elements for these domains shown here, like the electrical, hydraulic, mechanical, thermal, gas, magnetic, yep. and even fluids. But again, for more specialized and more advanced applications, we provide add-ons to Simscape. For example, we have power electronics, Simscape electronics, fluids, Simscape multibody, and even Simscape driveline. Yep. So I think a, a very nice workflow is that users can start very basic with the foundation library, but then for those advanced applications like automotive, uh, they can definitely add things like uh, Simscape multibody or Simscape driveline elements to model those s complex systems. All right, now I think this is a good point to put everything together. Oh, yeah. um, all the things that we have talked about and uh, some of the commonalities that there can be with all these products that we right. cover. So in si Simulink, the first thing that we saw, you have to know the equations to mm -hmm. be able to represent that in a model. Okay. Then we talked about the powertrain block set, which is built on Simulink, but again, the blocks are already implemented for you, so those blocks can implement things like engines, transmission, differentials, things like that. And it is a more data-driven approach, so it is best suited for users that have access to data. You can plug the data in that component, and then that operation is represented for you. And then now we're talking about Simscape, where we have the physical modeling approach. And again, we have different components that can be as simple as a resistor or as complex as an engine. And so this is a very interesting comparison of things, right? You have many options, and there isn't a right or wrong answer. But the idea here is that even though the tools have a different emphasis, you can definitely complement the functionality of each other. Right. So um, sometimes it, it, it's not an easy question to decide about what, what tool to use. The good news, however, is um, they can be combined to each other. So Powertrain Block Set is a subset of Simulink, mm -hmm. and Simscape builds um, onto Simulink as well. So at the end, there's no even the need to, to only use one, one tool. You can combine them. Absolutely. Um, but, but we suggest invest some, some time, some effort in order to make the decision early on because changing models from Simulink to Simscape may be tedious. Um, try to, to make these decisions at earliest possible. Um, and I think now it's time to, to have a look at an actual model. So Absolutely. what about an automotive demo? Absolutely, let's go ahead and do that. So again, I want to show the users how easy it can be to get started yeah. with modifying a, an existing shipping demo, right? So what we're going to do here. Shipping demo is a demo that comes with your installation. That's so right. So go to the documentation, check for examples, and you will find some stuff. Exactly. So what I'm going to do is take mm -hmm. this model from yep. Simscape driveline. Mm -hmm. It's just a vehicle with a four-speed transmission. And there it is. So right now, we see that this model just takes a constant input, mm -hmm. uh, or a predefined input, a brake and a throttle input. Okay. So what I want to do is modify this model so that it can take a drive cycle. But yep. where would I get that drive cycle data? And also, how do I make this vehicle follow that drive cycle? Mm -hmm input. So we're going to provide some of that drive cycle data in the file exchange submission. Right. 
and then I'll walk you through the changes that we would need to make to this engine block and also how to incorporate a driver subsystem. So let's go ahead and get started. So I'll just drag a from workspace block. I'll have my data available in the workspace. And I know that the drive cycle input is a structure called drive cycles dot us 06. And again, this is a EPA certification drive cycle. So now it's time to implement my driver subsystem. So the way I'm going to do that is with a PID controller. Mm -hmm. And that PID controller is going to take the error between my reference speed, which mm -hmm. is the drive cycle, and also the vehicle speed. So this sum block is responsible for providing the error to the PID controller. And the error is that difference between the reference speed, mm -hmm. the drive cycle, and also the vehicle speed, which is what we're actually measuring. And I think an important deal here is that we, we have to make sure that the speed is in the same units. I know that my drive cycle is in uh, units of miles per hour. Sure. And if I go into this subsystem here, I can see that the vehicle speed is also, also in miles, miles per, per hour. hour. So that is Perfect. already taken yep. care of. Now, from working with this model, I know that the throttle is supposed to be between an input to the engine between 0 and 1. Yep. And I want to normalize my braking output to be between 0 and negative 1. So the way I'm going to do this is by saturating the output of the PID controller. So I'll make it from 1 to negative 1. Mm -hmm. And I think at this point, I'm going to start simpler than a PID, and I want to implement a PI controller. So I'll start with some values that I know may work. Mm -hmm. And again, at that point, no worries. We have a, an entire episode of the Racing Lounge talking about how to tune PID controller, how to tune these kind of blocks. Um, have a look at that. Um, otherwise, let's just trust Ed that these values are, are meaningful. Right. So in this case, what I'm doing now is yeah, I'm separating the output of the PID controller between what's going to go to braking and what's going to go to acceleration. So BPP stands for brake pedal position, mm -hmm. APP for accelerator pedal position. So we're, we're going to separate that. For BPP, we want this to be between 0 and negative values. And for accelerator, we want this to be the opposite. We want it to be between infinite and zero. Yep. However, the output that I'm going to send to the vehicle for braking needs to be in absolute. Yep. Although I'm just separating so that I can know what is actually going to braking from the PID command. All right, and I think at this point we can group all of these elements in a subsystem. Yep. I did that by hitting Control G. And now if we go into this driver subsystem, we have my input, the output, let's call it again BP. Okay, so I know that this braking command goes here, and this acceleration command goes here. So once I have all these elements grouped together in a mm -hmm. subsystem, it's time to make sure that the data that I need is there in the workspace. So I'll go ahead and load my drive cycle data. Mm -hmm. And you can see that the drive cycle structure containing my drive cycle is there. And also, a stopping time for the simulation is called time US06. Cool. So mm -hmm. let's set that. Now, if I update my model, I should see that I have no errors. But if, if I run the model, I'm sure it's not going to give me right results because the engine has not been properly configured. So let's see what kind of results we would get out of this. Yep, you can see that the vehicle response is not what we want. The vehicle is pretty much going in a negative speed. This is not what we mm -hmm. would like right now. Mm -hmm. So we need to correct that. If I go into my engine system, there's a few parameters that I have to change for this to take right. that constant throttle input that was said before to change a dynamic input like a drive cycle. So first thing we want to do is implement an idle speed controller. Mm -hmm. So if we enable that, we can change this idle speed, let's say, to 700 RPM. OK. So the minimum speed of the car. 
exactly. the minimum it, RPMs of the motor to be exactly to be precise. Yep. It has an idle speed, and yeah. the controller takes care of uh, when there's no yep. input, it the speed oscillates at about that speed. Mm -hmm. And then in the dynamics of the engine, we also want to change the initial normalized throttle. Right now, the throttle is closed, so we don't want that. We want to leave it a little bit open mm -hmm. for initialization. So if we change that to 0.1, now mm -hmm. we can compare the speed response of the vehicle and the drive cycle. So what I'm going to do... Just add it to the scope. Yep. Correct. Yeah. And I'll take my drive cycle speed mm -hmm. and also connect it here. And now we can visualize that in the scope. Cool. Yep. So as you can see now, my vehicle is actually responding to that drive cycle, and I can tell that I'm meeting that drive cycle right. relatively well. And look, we, we opened the shipping demo, and well, how long did it take you? Five minutes to, to do some changes? You were explaining everything. So it's, it's that easy, and now we have a, have a car uh, embedded in a control system, including a driver, following a certain drive cycle. I, I would say that's, that's pretty impressed. Exactly, and it's relatively easy to do. Yeah. So another degree of customization that I want to do here yeah. is add this little image to my model just to make it look a little bit right. better. Right Now we have an actual driver, and then we can compare those results. And I think uh, another addition that I, can, that I want to say mm -hmm. is you can configure this model to take any kind of input, not just right. a certification drive cycle. It can be a lot of time right. or anything that you would yep. need. Yep. Good. And, and again, this was a super high-level overview, but it showed how easy you can get started. All right, so let's take a look at another uh, model that we have existing from our available online training. Right. So this vehicle here implements uh, a multi-domain vehicle, an electric mm -hmm. part of the powertrain and also the mechanical part of it. And this is something that is provided in that online training that Christoph has covered in the past. Right. So we basically start with the fundamentals. We, we, we talk about through and across variables. So we actually teach you the modeling fundamentals of Simscape. And gradually, over, I think, fix, six videos, we build, a, we build up that vehicle. So it's for both, uh, for combustion engines um, and for electric engines. Um, so we build it up. We, we, very similar to what you've just shown, we will implement a control system. And no need to follow everything what we do here. You will get all the, all the knowledge and all the info that you need to build that up on your own. Um, but, but let's have a look. What, what is special about that model? I think the interesting thing about mm -hmm. this model is that it represents an electric vehicle. So for example, we can see um, the battery pack, how mm -hmm. it was created yeah. by putting all the cells together. Mm -hmm. Then that energy is controlled to output so, a PWM. So really sorry to interrupt, and that may sound really boring. And there's an episode of the Racing Lounge covering battery modeling, yep. um, where we teach you how, how this equivalent circuit approach works, how you can actually tune and validate your batteries. So have a look at that episode if that's interesting for you. Absolutely. Then there's a need to control the output of that yeah. battery, and so this PWM system takes care of that. Yeah. And then that output actually goes to a motor where the energy is transformed from the electrical domain to the mechanical domain, and that uh, is where the drive line comes into play. Right. It starts with the motor, then things go to a simple gear block, then here is where everything goes to the gear subsystem, and here's where all the gear reductions take place in the drive line. And then finally, everything goes to the vehicle subsystem, right. where pretty much the vehicle dynamics and the forces are represented with right. each one of these blocks that are available in Simscape drive line. The vehicle subsystem is pretty interesting because it includes a vehicle body. So imagine of all the equations you would have to model to, to get a, a vehicle set up in Simulink. So I think this is a great advantage to, to use Simscape. And we even have some uh, models for tires represented here. Um, there are different ways to model tires. We took probably the most simple approach, magic formula. Absolutely. Um, but with a few blocks, you have a full vehicle. And so just imagine how many formulas and blocks you yeah. would have to have if you were to model this Simulink. Right. So Simscape and also the powertrain blocks that provide alternatives to right. that with blocks that already implement these components for you. Very nice, very cool. Mm -hmm. Excellent. So now let's move to a slide about the online training where you will find all the information. Um, it's accessible for every student team. We will provide the link um, with the slides. Um, it's video-based, so it's pretty much the same as you would do right now. So you watch a video where one of our colleagues um, is guiding you through the training, and you will find a lot of examples and also exercises for you in file exchange. Everything is free of charge. 
we will provide the link. And if you're interested, go ahead and please let us know what you think. Send us your ideas, send us suggestions for improvements. And I think this is the time, Ed, where we are about to talk about the key takeaways. So what did we cover today? Um, Absolutely. What is relevant? Let's summarize it. Again, Simscape provides a physical modeling approach. Those equations for each one of the component operations are already implemented in the block. So all you have to do is pretty much have the domain knowledge and just parameterize those blocks. So again, Simscape is not on to Simulink. Yep. And therefore, you can use it in the Simulink canvas. And you can use the foundation library to start with basic components, basic operations. Right. And then you can use different add-ons to Simscape, like multi-body and Simscape yep. driveline to uh, model more specialized and focused applications. Also, I think a, a big point on Simscape is that it's nice to have some domain knowledge so that you know what connections are necessary for each one of these elements. And then finally, I think it's important to remember that Simscape is also supported for co-generation if right. you want to do hardware testing or yeah. deployment as well. Perfect. I think this brings us to the end of um, part three. Mm -hmm. Thanks very much for presenting. Um, Absolutely. You're very welcome. Cool. And, and just for the sake of completeness, let's summarize um, some of our resources. And the first point that is really a big topic for us is feedback. So if you feel um, that you want to share your thoughts with us, send us an email or join our Facebook group. We are super happy to receive feedback, and we are always keen on, on receiving that and, and replying to that. You will find all videos of the Racing Lounge um, under the given URL. And on these web pages, you will also find a link to our software offer. So if you are an FSAE team or a former student team or another automotive team, you, you are ready to take our software offer. And do it. So if you do use our software, um, we would be delighted if, if you use the MathWorks logo on your car or on your reports. Thank you very much. Looking forward Thank to you, recording Christoph. number four. Um, stay tuned. Thank you. Bye. Bye bye.